I'm going to be standing up here talking to you for about 15 minutes or so. And by the time I'm done, over 18 million pounds of plastic waste will have been created. That's the equivalent weight of nearly 200 blue whales in plastic waste, or over 1,200 fully grown elephants, or over 9,000 American bison. Now, if I sound like a street vendor trading in plastic waste for marine and land animals, well, that's exactly what we're doing as a society today. On average, about 9% of all that waste will get recycled, but the rest, the rest will leak into nature devastating entire natural ecosystems. But what does that really mean? Where does all this plastic that we are constantly spitting out and putting out into the world actually go? You see, recycling is expensive. And importantly, not all plastic can be recycled in the first place. It was never designed to. So a lot of the waste that we generate here in the global north, gets put on a ship and sent halfway across the world to Malaysia, Kenya, India, or countries like these, out of sight, but not out of trouble. About five years ago, while doing our honors thesis at Penn, my co-founders and I set out to learn more about this global trash economy. Our research took us from landfill to landfill from Indonesia to India to Colombia, and a common pattern emerged. The absence of comprehensive waste management infrastructure had given rise to an unregulated, corrupt, informal waste sector that engages millions of people from some of the most impoverished and historically marginalized communities across the world. Our plastic waste crisis without us knowing it, has created an unspoken, often overlooked, humanitarian catastrophe. The poverty of this uh, workforce, this unseen workforce, has, is often cyclical and intergenerational and makes them extremely vulnerable to exploitation. In India, for example, in some of these waste worker communities, today, in the 21st century, the average life expectancy is just 39 years. I still remember these very first research interviews that we did in Mumbai during the monsoons on the outskirts of Devnar dumping ground, Asia's largest landfill. When we entered the landfill, we were taken aback. Um, in front of us, there were these towers of predominantly plastic waste rising up above 30, 40, 50 meters high above the ground merging into the background with the skyline of the city of Mumbai. In that moment, the environmental magnitude of the plastic waste crisis has never been more real to me. Because it was clear that these two worlds, the city of Mumbai on one hand, and its trash being dumped on the other, were on this unavoidable collision course, almost as if the city is being consumed by its own consumption. Hundreds of people work in this landfill even today, most of them informal, with very little to no regulatory protections. One of the uh, women we spoke, there, uh, spoke to there was this young girl who told us about her life and how she'd grown up with this landfill. She told us about how she'd been working as a waste picker in the landfill since she was just four years old. How she'd gotten addicted to drugs and alcohol when she was just nine because being high was the only way she could tolerate the rotting smells and the revulsion to handling this garbage. She told us about her sister who lost her leg in one of the many fires that spontaneously erupt in these landfill conditions. But I don't mean to scare you with these isolated horror stories. These are not isolated horror stories. In fact, they are the lived experiences of entire communities who bear the burdens of our rampant consumption. We cannot turn a blind eye to this anymore. So what do we do? It's so complex. We believe that the solutions also lie within the same communities. With decades of experience, there are hundreds of local resourceful entrepreneurs who've already come up with innovative ideas to improve things in how waste is managed 
both ethically as well as efficiently. But none of these solutions have really scaled up significantly. Not because these ideas are lacking or there's something wrong with their intervention, but because they lack one crucial ingredient. Can anyone guess what that is? Sorry? Yeah, exactly, capital. Uh, research has shown by ASU that more money has been invested into WeWork alone, and we all know how that's turned out, than all of the recycling startups in the history of the last 25 years across the world. And we believe that's a clear sign of why we face this problem today. We, as a society, have simply not allocated the capital that we need to to solve this problem. And so we created Repurpose as a platform to identify, finance, and scale interventions that are solving the global plastic waste crisis in all of its complexities, the environmental, the humanitarian and social, even the geopolitical. Every project we build today facilitates intersectional progress, cleaning up the environment while bringing socioeconomic development to waste workers in the communities that they come from. This is Kerala in India. We worked with the local municipalities to set up door-to-door -door waste collection for over 100,000 households for the very first time. This project is keeping today, every single year, over 12 million pounds of plastic from entering the Indian Ocean every single year. And in the process is creating hundreds of formal, dignified jobs for women like these from these rural communities. This is Bogota in Colombia. We partnered with local waste worker cooperatives to finance the recovery of multi-layered packaging, packaging that uh, is simply not designed to be recyclable. These wrappers otherwise have no value. And we upcycle these into bricks, bricks that are used to make affordable housing, often for the waste workers themselves who do the important work of collecting these neglected materials. And today, Repurpose has now removed over 33 million pounds of plastic from nature that otherwise would have leaked into the environment across some of the most fragile regions of South America, Asia, and Africa. And in doing so, we've increased incomes for over 1,000 waste workers and brought ethical and efficient waste management as a dignified human right to over 1 million citizens across the global south for the very first time. And what this journey uh, with Repurpose has taught me is that the plastic pr crisis, the packaging problem, much like the climate crisis, is not an isolated concern. There are so many interwoven points of pressure that reaching true environmental justice with your brand requires action on more than just a headline interpretation of the issue. These problems are deeply complex, and therefore, the solutions also need to be complex, to be thoughtful, to be layered, to be comprehensive. We cannot be reductive in our ESG roadmaps, thinking in black and white. The reality is that there is no silver bullet solution to these crises. No singular claim or certification that holistically can encompass all of the many ESG responsibilities that a brand faces today. But here's the good news. Consumers of tomorrow are looking for those intersectional initiatives from brands and are actively rewarding them for it. This is data from McKinsey uh, and Nielsen IQ, a study that they recently put out, that shows that even the definition of sustainability is dramatically changing over time giving back to society, giving back to workers, empowering people from minority backgrounds. These are now all important factors when it comes to the perception of sustainability. And brands that are viewed to be more holistically sustainable grow faster than those that are not and have much higher brand loyalty from their customers. And so what does this mean for you? Uh, what does it mean for your impact roadmap? Well, uh, I believe that taking concrete action and incorporating tangible sustainability-driven claims is a great place to start. Already, over 75% of millennials and Gen Z are willing to pay more for products with at least one sustainability claim. 
even when these intentions are put to the test, as Nielsen IQ's research and other research studies have shown as well, in fact, the real purchase data is indeed corroborating this directional trend. Customers are willing to vote with their dollars for more holistic sustainability initiatives. Plastic in packaging related claims can be quite powerful for your brand equity. US consumers across generations, regions, neighborhoods, all clearly rank the marine litter issue as the most pressing environmental concern on their minds today. Plastic waste, so tangible, ever pervasive, has become, as I like to call it, the in defining environmental gateway drug of our time because it fuels further environmental activism from consumers when they get sparked to action when they see a turtle choking on a straw or plastic on the beach that they love to go through every day of their childhood. But this consumer trend is not pointing out to brands to just collect and what we call go sustainability certification shopping to collect a list of claims that go on the footer of your website. In fact, we believe that consumers want to be connected at a deeper level. They want to engage with stories from the ground to understand the real world challenges that the brands are trying to take on and the lives of the people that are involved in the process. By talking about these real life complexities for these problems and how they affect people across the world, we have a tremendous opportunity to build empathy, to share stories with our customers that will stick with them for life. We invite you to call your brand advocates to dive into the murky, complicated roadmaps, unpacking the complexities one by one, because there is power to be found in that vulnerability. All this research is showing that consumers see brands who are open about their sustainability journey more favorably, even when it's not perfect. The data is clear. Consumers don't want to let perfect get in the way of good. And Grove Collaborative, a leading e-commerce retailer that many of you might have heard of, has done this really well, we believe. On an ambitious journey to redesign single-use packaging, Grove has already achieved some dramatic results in reducing their plastic footprint and taking care of their own house. But going plastic free, as we all know, is a long term journey. It's not an overnight flick the switch. And in the meantime, Grove is committed that all products that retail on their platform will be financing the removal of as much plastic from nature as they use in their packaging. And so across three countries, Grove funded plastic recycling pl projects have removed over 7.5 million pounds of plastic waste, which is the equivalent of about 680 million pounds of uh, million plastic bags. That's not a bad place to start while you're working towards a longer term reduction that your customers do want to see. And Grove invited consumers into their journey through this Beyond Plastic initiative that they created. This is a core part of Grove's brand identity that provides a clear picture of their sustainability roadmap including redesign, reduction, and recovery. And the human impact, the people involved in these stories are as much a part of these initiatives as the environmental impact. Most importantly, Grove is not just speaking to their consumers, talking at them, but in fact, they are actually extending the invitation to their customers to join in on the journey. Individual Grove customers can finance plastic removal and support waste workers directly on the Grove website deeply connecting them to Grove's own work in their own sustainability journey. This, what Grove calls an impact shop, is actually Grove's, one of Grove's fastest growing SKUs and showcases just how much customers want to be involved in the journey to do good alongside the brands that they know and love. Here's another example. Jason Momoa's Mananalu. Isn't that a handsome face? <laughs> an aluminum water bottle company that he founded with the tagline, Drink one, remove one. Mana Nalu removes the plastic bottles worth of plastic waste for every metal bottle purchased. But the brilliance of this claim is that it puts the agency into the hands of the consumer, very directly involving them in the impact action that is so core to the brand promise. 
And this has worked so well that Grove did, uh, that Mananalu did a lot of research and testing, and they found that cu their customers are willing to pay up to 20% more for just this one impact claim. So when you go back to work from this conference and are designing your sustainability roadmaps or ESG strategies, it's completely normal to freak out about just how complex all of these issues are, about how intractable some of these problems we're trying to solve may seem. But we invite you to sit with that complexity, to not let it drive inaction, but rather channeling it to design deliberate, holistic solutions that make steady progress over time. Your consumers will thank you for it, and even better, they will feel empowered and gladly join you in your sustainability journey one step at a time. I really want to thank you all for the passion that we've seen just over the last three days in bringing, uh, that all of us are bringing to solving all of these complex issues, and it's been really inspiring personally to me. And so before I end, I wanted to share a quick video of an initiative that we kicked off last year called the Plastic Reality Project. Through this annual, oh, <laughs> okay, I'll let the video play and I'll give you some context. Getting to observe the results of our consumption and see it firsthand is striking. Only 9% of plastic that's being produced and recycled today, that means 10 million tons of plastic ends up in the ocean. You can read about it, you can see statistics, numbers, and get alarmed. But this, this is a whole other level of reality. Early on in a journey of growing Repurpose Global, we realized only thousands of decision makers hold the keys to ending plastic waste once and for all. And that's why we decided to create the Plastic Reality Project, a first-of-its-kind initiative dedicated to arming corporate leaders and environmental practitioners with the knowledge they need to catalyze impact and accelerate our fight against the plastic epidemic. Today we're at a material recovery facility outside of Koyikode in the state of Kerala, India. It's monumental, the amount of tonnage and the amount of work that we see all the workers here do. It's mostly women that work here. The idea of this facility is to actually manage the dry waste, which is almost around 35% of the household waste composition in India. We got to actually see a facility where waste workers have actually been trained and recruited to deal with the waste. The speed that they're able to sort the garbage was phenomenal. I was just, I was amazed. We're watching um, some of the waste warriors open up the, the bags and looking at the packaging. Funny enough, I saw the lady picked up a purple curtain. I thought to myself, I know this purple. It's definitely one of our products. I'd say, well, we were basically lost for words. It's about telling the brands that you need to be responsible for the plastic that you put in the environment. So we need to pick it up and it costs you something. As a Plastic Action Coalition, we at Repurpose have supported hundreds of global companies and thousands of innovators in the efforts towards reducing plastic waste. We create this problem as brand owners, so I think the least we can do is to be a part of the solution. The facilitators for the project have done a great job of providing activities and spaces to really cement the experiences and the emotions that we've had this week. Not only getting to see the solution up close, but getting to speak with people, hear their stories, to sort waste ourselves. This was just an amazing opportunity to be able to learn on the ground alongside some experts in the field, some passionate people who care as much as we do, and the ability to take some solutions back to work with my industry. Together, we can reduce waste, revive lives, and restore nature's balance. So the goal of the Plastic Reality Project is really to equip sustainability decision makers with the lived experiences and perspectives that can inform and be incorporated into their plastic action and broadly their sustainability roadmaps. 
We're hosting two editions of the Plastic Reality Project this fall in Indonesia and India, and we'd love for you to join us to learn more. We can do this. The plastic problem has created a humanitarian catastrophe, yes, but the plastic solution has the obligation and the opportunity to improve the lives of millions of people while simultaneously cleaning up this beautiful planet. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate your time.